So for aqueous solutions, it's reasonable to express uh, concentration in moles per liter. But when we have gases, um, oftentimes it's easier to talk about the partial pressure of the gas instead of its concentration. So the partial pressure of a gas is proportional to its concentration. If we look at um, the ideal gas law, right, PV is equal to nRT. And if we rearrange this, bring the V down here, and take the RT down there, we have P over RT is equal to N over V, which is molarity. Okay? So we can convert between pressure and molarity. We have to know the temperature. So we can also express the equilibrium constant with pressures instead of concentrations. And it takes the same form, uh, but it's not necessarily the same value. So we use a subscript C for the equilibrium constant with respect to concentration. So here we're looking at the concentrations of reactants and products. Kp is equilibrium constant with respect to pressure, and we use atmospheres for the pressure. And so it's the partial pressure of the reactants and products, and the equation takes the same form where everything is raised to a power equal to its coefficient. Any questions? So sometimes Kc is equal to Kp, but oftentimes it's not. There is a relationship between the two, though. Um, they're not the same because the partial pressures of a gas in atmospheres is not the same as its concentration and molarity. It's related to it, but it's not the same. So let's uh, derive this relationship. Start by relating molarity to partial pressure. So the molarity is equal to the pressure over RT. That's what we just got from the ideal gas law, right? N over V is molarity. So if we have um, Kc is equal to the concentration of C to the C power, D to the D power over A to the A power, and B to the B power. Well, the, the molarity and the pressure are related, right? So um, here for the concentration of C, we could put in the pressure divided by RT because that is, those are equal. So we can rewrite that. The partial pressure, whoops, partial pressure of C over RT raised to the C power, partial pressure of D over RT to the D power. So what I did is, in for the molarities here, instead of molarity, I put in the partial pressure divided by RT. And so that is inside here, and it gets raised to the same exponent. So that's a big mess. We could factor out the RTs. I could tease them out, maybe. Yeah. Uh, where shall I start this? I'll start this way over on the far side. Um, so in the numerator there, I've got 1 over RT to the C 
Oops. The whole thing disappeared. That wasn't desirable. <coughs> and I've got one over RT to the D power. And then I've got the partial pressure of C to the C power and the partial pressure of D to the D power. And then in the denominator, I've got a similar mess. Well, I do that one. Uh, B. And partial pressure of A to the A, partial pressure of B to the B. And you might be thinking, well, how is that better? But if we look at this part right here, that looks very much like this, but just with pressures, right? The part there in the yellow is Kp, the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. So Kc, what we originally started with, is equal to, um, we can combine this mess of things. This is RT to the A plus B over RT to the C plus D. And that is all too high. So that's not going to work. Oh, it did work. Well, except for that one line. OK. Times K P. The part here in the yellow box is Kp, equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. If you care about derivations and how all of this works out, you probably will believe me when I say that this mess turns into this mess. And if you don't, you don't care, so I'm not going to explain it. If you want me to explain it later, I will, but it's kind of a mess. So we can simplify that a little bit more and say that this is RT to the A plus B minus C plus D times KP is equal to KC. And now I'm completely out of room. So we can rearrange that and say that KP is equal to KC times RT to the C plus D minus A plus B. And that's a bit ugly, so we call that delta N. Delta N is the difference in moles of gases between the products of the reactants. <coughs> yeah. The key takeaway is in purple.
So, um, delta n was c plus d minus a plus b. These are the coefficients of the products minus the coefficients of the reactants. If C plus D minus A plus B equals zero, then this RT term, poof, goes away and KP equals KC. Everybody done writing this one down? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So what I did here is this says KC is equal to KP times this. I rearranged this. This is KP is equal to KC. So it would have been divided, and that changes the sign on the exponent. Yeah. The good news is I'm not going to make you derive this. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so um, let me write that equation out. This is our standard generic equation. Okay. So delta N you take the coefficients of gaseous products and you subtract the sum of the coefficients of gaseous reactants. Oh, yeah. At equilibrium. At equilibrium. Whoops. So this is that equation. Kp equals Kc times Rt raised to the power of delta N. Delta N is the difference between moles of gaseous products and reactants. If we have the same number of moles of gas after the reaction as before, then Kp is equal to Kc, because all the Rt terms are going to cancel out. They don't cancel out if the moles of gases aren't the same. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, so if moles of gas are lost or gained, obviously that affects the numbers, but what mm -hmm. does that mean? Well, it just affects the relationship between pressure and concentration. Because the pressure of a gas is not the same as the molarity of a gas. They're related to each other, but they're related by a factor of RT. And each gas is related by a factor of RT. And so in that equation, things get raised to a power. And so if they're not all raised to the same power, they're not going to cancel out. So let's do a practice problem. Consider the following reaction and corresponding value of Kc. What is the value of Kp at this temperature? Well, we can write um, that relationship between Kp and Kc. It's the same. It is the same, yes. It's Kc times Rt to the delta N. Delta N is the moles of gas products. How many moles of gas products are there in the equation? <coughs> Two, minus the moles of gas reactants, which is 1 plus 1, and that's 0. So this term goes to 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Kp equals Kc, so Kp equals 6.2 times 10 to the 2. OK? That's the nice, simple situation. Any questions?
tend to take it a little bit slow and let, let things sink in instead of, you know, the garden hose and you put too much water on, it just runs off and then it erodes and takes dirt with it and you're worse off than you were before you started. What about units? So formally, when we're talking about concentration or partial pressures, we're not actually talking about the molarity. We're talking about the molarity as a ratio to a reference molarity. So for example here, 3.7 molar, what we're really talking about is the ratio of 3.7 molar over 1 molar. That's what's in the, in the equilibrium constant expression. The m's cancel out. And the 1 doesn't matter. And so you could view this a couple of ways. You could say, wow, that's really cool. Or, wow, that's a sneaky way to get around the units problem. Because the units on K, if we didn't have it like this, the units on K would be different for all kinds of things. They'd be all crazy units. So we always, always, always express concentration and molarity, partial pressures in atmospheres, and then we just drop the units. Oops, can't forget this part. But we're not just ignoring them. It's actually a ratio. So we know that, and then we'll just, you don't have to write it out. Any questions about that? So K has no units. Here's a conceptual problem. Under which circumstances are KP and KC equal for the reaction shown here? If a plus B equals C plus D if the reaction is reversible or if the equilibrium constant is small. It's A. Because the relationship has that delta N. If C plus D is equal to A plus B, then delta N is zero. And KP and KC are equal. Any questions? So when you're doing problems, if you need to go back and forth between concentration and pressure, you have to look at the moles of gases on each side. And if they're the same, then you can just go back and forth at will. It's fine. <laughs>